Today's episode came out July 19th, which means the Succeed with ADHD Telesummit started yesterday, but it's not too late to register. Go to succeedwithadhd.adhdrewired.com to register for free or upgrade to the ADHD Success Kit for only $97 and get unlimited access to all the speaker sessions and bonus gifts from all of us. Go to succeedwithadhd.adhdrewired.com. Leave off the www because that link won't work. Or go to my website or open your podcast app and see the link in there. Succeedwithadhd.adhdrewired.com. See you there. A lot of the productivity things, when you hear them, it sounds like a great idea in principle. So, man, that's a really good idea. And I'm sure if I can, if I can nail this, man, I'm going to be so on top of things. And when it comes to the execution, not so much. And it was kind of that way for me with, with um, self-compassion. Um, and that was something that I, 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 I really had to work on. ADHD Rewired Episode 125. This is the show designed to help those of us who have really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and consultant. We know that starting can be the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me thank our sponsors. Audible. Support for this podcast comes from Audible. Audible is offering listeners of ADHD Rewired a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. You ever wonder what books listeners of this podcast recommend? Find out at the break. Get your free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Turn good intention into amazing actions with the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. This virtual video-based group coaching program meets three times a week. Improve your productivity, develop better habits, experience the true power of supportive accountability from members of our own tribe. Learn, grow, and connect. Learn more at ADHDrewired.com. I hope to see you there. That's ADHDrewired.com. And prepare to get your ADHD rewired. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. We are here today in the virtual ADHD Rewired studios with my guest, Dan Spears. Dan is a 36-year-old native of Liverpool, England, who unfortunately does not sound like one of the Beatles. He emigrated to the U.S. in 2005, landing in Texas, then ventured north to Ohio in 2010, where he lives with his wife, three stepchildren, two cats, and according to Dan, a rabbit that hates him. Dan was finally diagnosed with ADHD in 2015. Dan, welcome to ADHD Rewired. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's, I've, I've been looking forward to this. Be, hoping it's going to be a fun experience. You know, Danny, you mentioned that since your diagnosis, you, you feel like you've been putting together this puzzle, but that you're not really sure all the parts came through. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about that? Yeah. So um, when I got the initial diagnosis uh, back in the fall of last year, um, it was basically, I, I, I had a, I was diagnosed by due to having to go do a, a neuropsych test, which was six hours of word puzzles, number puzzles, visual puzzles, all, all kinds of things. Um, and then it was, hey, you've got ADHD, congratulations. Here's a prescription, off you go. Okay, all right, well, now, now, now what? Um, so I had to start trying to figure things out and, um, the counselor I was seeing at the time suggested driven to distraction, which was uh, a, a huge, the, the Dr. Hallowell book, which was a huge, huge uh, eye-opener for me. Um, and it definitely explained a lot, 
and it's like, okay, well, I can see how, okay, this explains that, this explains why I did this, and why, okay, now I know why that happened. Okay, fine. Um, and as I've been going on, I've been trying to do more read, look, read other books, other resources online, talk with other um, ADHD folks. And although I guess, I understand the big picture mm-hmm. and, and, and how things happen and why things happen. But where I'm, where I'm struggling with is um, just trying to, trying to put a lot of it into practice. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've got the, 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 the mental and emotional side figured out ahead of um, practical stuff like day-to-day strategies, mm-hmm. um, trying to be more on top of things so on and so forth. And that, that's the area is like, okay, I'm, I feel like I'm missing something here because it feels like that the emotional stuff should have been harder. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I've got it all figured out. It's an ongoing process, but it feels like the, the, the being able to implement strategies should be easier than the, uh, than the emotional side. It should, huh? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I guess I, I guess that was my my thinking. But. You, were, you were hoping. You were hoping it was going to be that way. All right. For so sure. now, because you you did mention when we talked last week that um, you, you did you did grieve a bit uh, with this diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was definitely um, uh, reading through driven to distraction. Um, it was uh, it was late at night. Couldn't sleep. And I figured I'm just going to start going through it. And um, I found the beginning of the book a little, not to knock Mr. Hallowell, but uh, I found the beginning a little dry. I was like, oh, stick with it, stick with it. And then things started clicking and things started making sense. And I began to understand that a lot of the things that about myself that I didn't like or that I was frustrated with that I couldn't change, it wasn't my personality. It was, it was, it was my wiring. It was, it was, it was what, just how what were my, some of those things, Dan? Um, procrastination, mm-hmm. um, a huge one. Um, emotional difficulties. Um, how how would that present itself? Um, I, I it felt like when I, I had a strong emotional reaction, I would go from I wouldn't go from like zero to I'm working my way up. It'd be zero to like 150. Mm-hmm. Like that, it would just it would just be instant, um, and I would find it very hard to. It was it was such an impulsive thing. I just couldn't. I want. I I couldn't reel it in, and I couldn't. I couldn't see what I was doing, and um, I knew it was impacting my relationship with my wife and my family, and um, I just lost my thread. Was it kind of like uh, uh, for you where? You you try you wanted to get a drink from the drinking fountain, but the only option was a fire hose, and that's how the emotions were kind of released. Yes, um, and the, the, oh yeah, because how did it? Yep, yeah. Thank you. I just got my train. Of thought. Dan lost the train of thought, but don't worry, folks. We got it right back. We're back on schedule. <laughs> um, so the, the emotional the emotional piece. I was asking you, um, how did it? How did that play out? And um, uh, which was sort of a, a, a part of the question regarding uh, what were some of the things that you were sort of frustrated with uh, in relation to your ADHD? Yeah. Um, the, being able to, 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 to handle my emotions in a more effective manner and in a manner that was less destructive to my family, mm-hmm. I mean, to my wife and to my interactions with the kids, um, was definitely a, it was, it was an eye opener. Um, you know, realizing that, you know, my, my memory is something that I've always struggled with. Um, you know, I've joked at times that I'm the only person that could grow, go to the grocery store with a list and still leave missing a couple items on that list. Um, oh, trust me, Dan, you are not the only person that would do that. Yeah. Um, not just, not just the short term stuff, but longer term, um, it seems like if it happened last week, mm-hmm. good luck with me remembering that. It's mm-hmm. Like I can retain, I can learn new knowledge, new skills, new information, but it seems like experiential memories 
Mm. Like my wife and I go on a date, for example. Uh, we go out for, you know, we, and we do, we go to this place, we go to that place. A couple of weeks later, I know we went on a date. And I know we had a great time. And I know on a, at a broad level what we did. But she'll say, remember when we saw that one thing while we were out? Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, remembering people and thing. It's it's. Uh, I know that the the you know, I'll say ADHD folks have do have issues with our memories. But it seems like mine is more pronounced in some regards. You know, part of of memory also has to do with has to sort of get into the brain to to become a memory, right? Do you think that there's a, a part of that when you're talking about experiential uh, memories that your mind is in maybe from five different places when you're experiencing something? Um, I would say that was definitely, you know, pre-diagnosis. Absolutely. Um, I would say that was definitely a thing. Post-diagnosis, you know, I've been, I've been on medication for a while now. I feel like it's better sometimes and other times it's, it's broadly the same. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. There's definitely validity in in what you're saying. Um, I just, I feel like it's, it's, I still struggle with that even when I'm, I'm, I'm medicated. Mm -hmm. Uh, How are you with remembering names? I might need, sometimes I might need a little bit of a prod. Like if my mm-hmm. wife will be say, "Hey, do you remember so and so?" Uh, and I may not remember the name, but if she kind of throws me a couple of, well, you know, but 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 but, and I can kind of, mm-hmm. it, it seems like everything's there, but I can't access it until I've got enough sure. nudges. And, to... and that's the recall issue that that uh, can often uh, be a challenge. And and some of the things that we know that can be helpful with recall one is is looking at you know your sleep, looking at stress. Um, cause the, the, the more stress the, the body and brain are, the, the, the less sleep it's getting. Um, it's the less access it has to kind of the, the mental file cabinets, right? It's like all the, all the papers are there. Like kind of just looks like my desk, right? Or it's just the stuff I, it's there somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Right. So I, I, was, li- I was listening to a podcast, uh, this week, um, the, uh, productivity show or by agent efficiency i think that's what it's called and um you know because I've, I've always been interested in trying to learn different strategies for remembering names because it's something that that i i really really struggle with and you know and i've heard all the strategies about you know we'll repeat the person's name three times in a sentence and um which i've tried that has not really worked well for me um to uh try to write it down uh, as soon as you, you meet someone and I, and I you know when i can i try to do that so I've, I've tried all these different sort of memory strategies trying to make associations and i learned a new strategy this week and i was um oh. uh, i thought it was it was really great and he even talks about you know the, the whole origin of uh you know repeat a person's name three times actually comes from uh, the napoleon hill book uh think and grow rich um, which by the way, you can get for free on audible with a free download and audible trial.com slash ADHD rewired. You like that? I'm trying to do away with some of the, the breaks, um, throwing it right in, but it's relevant. It's relevant. So, so he's talking about, um, you know, with his strategy to do that, if you think about it, so it's hi, Dan. So it's, it's nice to meet you, Dan. So Dan, it's, it's kind of weird, right? So that comes across as unnatural. Right, right. It's like, I, I know what you're trying to do. And the promise doesn't even work, at least not for me. Um, so the idea that he suggested, which I really liked, is um, asking questions about the name. Like, so for Dan, it's like, do you ever, is it Dan? Is it Danny old? Is it Danny? Is it just Dan? It's literally just Dan. Oh, and so you sort of get in the conversation uh, about that. Um, and you can say, are you, are you, be named after anybody like actually take interest in that um and you could say you know i have i have a, a cousin dan that's named after my grandpa. i mean you could make stuff up i suppose if you wanted to but it was a to me it, you know trying to come up with association sort of on the spot can be hard unless you're actually actively sort of practicing memory strategies right because it's not something we, we typically do right. um 
So I just thought it was a really cool strategy that I was like, when I, when I heard that, I was like, oh, I can't wait to share that on the podcast. So, uh, cause I thought it was, it was new and I'm always looking for new strategies for how to remember names. Yeah. That's, I don't think I've heard that one before. So let's go back to talking about, so you were learning about ADHD. You were having these frustrations with it. You were struggling with procrastination. You're struggling with, um, uh, some of the emotional self-regulation. Um, and I would say at the beginning of the show that, that you were, diagnosed just last year 2015 you yeah. started you started taking medication right um yeah. you also said that prior to that diagnosis that you were uh, also um, you had been diagnosed with depression yes that was uh, about six months previous okay so there was really this, this whole year uh last two years has been kind of all right what's, what's going on with dan and, and how can i improve dan yeah was there a catalyst uh that sort of led to that yeah, it was really, um, it was my marriage. Um, the, you know, my, my wife and I, we've been together for six, maybe seven, almost, almost seven years. Um, fifth wedding anniversary, uh, just a couple of months from now, actually, in uh, mid-September. Um, and although we've been together all this time, my, my issues were impacting the relationship. Um, my relationship with her, my relationship with the kids, and um, things just kind of came to a head, and we 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 had a huge blow up, and it was a where do we go from here? And um, I I finally realized that I needed to start figuring out what was going on. I had no clue, no idea. Um, so I started seeing a counselor, and uh, after a couple of months of seeing. Uh, my, my counselor is an amazing, amazing woman. Um, um, I, I owe, a, I owe a, a fairly large debt of gratitude to her. Um, she's like, hey, so you, I think it's pretty clear at this point you're dealing with, um, with some severe depression. So um, I, got, I got into a psychiatrist, he put me on some medication and that helped, but um, it, it, still, it was still obvious that there was something wasn't right um that although i was i was putting work in and, and 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 trying to understand things that something just wasn't there and um both my counselor and my psychiatrist both said to me you ever been tested for adhd no do you ever feel like you've got adhd me nah so i go what about at school were you ever you know and they asked you know a lot of the a lot of the questions that I would, that would probably pinpoint the hyperactive type. Mm. Um, and I, I was like, nope, 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 nope. Um, so they well, I'll have to get you tested anyway. And then that's how I got the diagnosis. And it, it, it I've since realized I'm actually more the inattentive. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's that, that presentation of ADHD that is so often missed. Um, that was my, my uh, presentation as well. Um, but it's interesting I, I, and, you know, I don't even think it was four, maybe four or five years ago where it sort of dawned on me that while I don't really have the hyperactivity piece of it, you know, that that presentation is hyperactivity slash impulsivity. So there's, if you look at the diagnostic criteria, there's six features of hyperactivity and three of impulsivity, right? So, and I'm looking at that and like, you know, it's, I don't have the hyperactivity, but there's some things that I'm, can be somewhat impulsive on. Um, but not always. Uh, sometimes it's like I overthink something and then I'm just like, oh, right, whatever. I'll just kind of right. move forward just so I can make the decision, even though it might not be the best decision. Um, but that's, that's a strategy for me or an uh, issue for me that I've gotten a lot better at. Um, but I think it's one of those things that, that we don't always think about when we're thinking about the inattentive presentation of ADHD, that you can still have some of those other features as well. Um, and it's not a, a stable uh, uh, um, presentation, which is why they moved from calling it a subtype to a presentation, because we know that you can actually fluctuate like every six months between presentations. Isn't that fun? Whoa. I did not know that. Yeah. Huh. And it's and it typically, though, it, it's going from the hyperactivity, impulsivity, uh, to inattention, but not always, not always, because sometimes people, when uh, when they're uh, highly stressed or they're not sleeping well, 
um, for them, it, pre- it can present as as make increasing uh, those cognitive functions that are that are often associated with inattention um, and distractibility. But for some people, it presents as more hyperactivity and impulsivity when they're not resting and when they're they're not taking care of themselves. Hmm. I do notice a difference. Um, I, I started listening to to the to your podcast earlier in the year um because i spend uh 10 to 12 hours a week commuting and so podcast and music uh, basically help me keep my sanity for that portion of my week and i was um i realized hey i should look and see if there's adhd podcasts found yours and uh, started plowing through from the beginning so i'll freely admit that i'm currently at about episode 20 something or other okay um but, but I did listen to some of the more recent ones here the last couple of weeks as well. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to, because I thought, oh, you know, if I'm trying to understand this and I'm trying to learn as much as I can and work out, I should probably just start at the beginning and work my way through. Um, so based on, uh, you said you just recently listened to a couple of the more recent ones. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, this podcast seems to evolve about every 40 episodes or so because I have ADHD and I'll get bored of the same format. And so I got to mix stuff up. Right. And, uh, and I think every, I think every evolution of, uh, that I've brought to the show, I, I, I think it's been good. Um, I, so what, it, what did you, uh, notice from the, the kind of first 20 ish to the last few that you just listened to? Um, it's a really weird thing. Um, but the, um, well, maybe not, I guess, but, the. The audio quality has certainly improved. Not that it was bad in the beginning, but like the the shows, the the theme tune for the show, the the music that you play at the beginning, um, it comes through a lot clearer on the newer episodes versus the old one. And it it seems like you've, it just seems like you, you, your presentation and uh, I don't know, it just seems like you, you feel a lot more settled in it, which I mean, I guess you would have to do it for a couple of years, but uh, you know, yeah, it just, I, I can tell that you've 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 just kind of progressed and you've got to feel more comfortable with the with what you're doing and the, the process and yeah it's been it, and the the ones I listened to actually were all longer ones um, see uh, how to talk with you know how like, um, helping your doctor understand mm-hmm. and uh, the one before that which I don't remember what it was then. Well, it's it's really funny because the, uh, this week someone posted something in the the ADHD Rewired Facebook community, and ref- they referenced something uh, about like episode seventy seven. They're like, yes. I'm listening to episode seventy seven. They posted a YouTube video, and my first thought was, what was episode seventy seven? I don't remember what that was. Like, you know, so it's just sort of funny. And uh, for, I, I appreciate the, the feedback. Um, I uh, I certainly enjoy positive feedback. It does fill my emotional bucket, and I'm okay with admitting that. Um, cause I think we have to own what helps us. Right. Oh, yeah. um, but I, but I was sort of just interested to see, you know, when I hear someone who's just started and I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I'm sort of excited for them because you know, it, it this show has evolved so much, um, that it's like, uh, you know, I hope they're going to enjoy the journey. Oh yeah. I mean, I've certainly, uh, I've certainly enjoyed everything that I've listened to. I don't think as I'm going through and I'm listening to them, if I, uh, if I come across something where it's like, oh, that was really good. I'll have, like, pull over in the car and pause the podcast and like make a little note of like, okay, this episode, this time frame, so that I can go back later. And um, but when I've not got two hands on the steering wheel and I can, I can go back and uh, I'll listen to it more attentively. All right. So um, that's cool that you, you take, so you take notes uh, on the podcast on when you're listening to it and do you go back to those, those notes? Mm. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, sometimes. I intend to go back to those notes, right? Yeah. Just, uh, I think it, it, it depends on, I find that if it's something, if it's in the morning while I'm driving in, I'm more likely to go back to it, back to the notes than if it's on the way home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but that's, that seems to have been the case. Something that, uh, that works for, for me, Dan, is, when I have things, you know, so we have these, these, all these places where we capture our sort of the ideas, the things that we want to kind of look at, go back to later. So these are sort of our, our inputs, 
right? So I have this whole uh, this whole model that I talk about. It's we take a trip, so A T R I P. So A is accountability, T timers, R is reminders, I is inputs, and P is is processes, processes, and planning. Okay, so the the pulling over and and making a, a little bookmark and a note that's an input, right? So you're you're something that you want to capture for later. So for some of those things where it's like, okay, I want to think about this more. I want to explore this more. That then becomes, that's, that's a process and, and a process sees that you have to sort of go through. So you might want to figure out a way to maybe schedule time for yourself to go through those, uh, those uh, inboxes that you're kind of creating for yourself. Because um, I, then I used to be, you know, I just had the longest, longest to-do list because especially with, you know, with Siri, it's super easy to, to add something to your to-do list. What's hard is going to the to-do list and actually doing the doing the things that are on that list. Yeah, the the, the time scheduling is definitely something uh, I struggle with a lot, and it's just down to the fact that I I spend you know ten twelve hours a week commuting. Um, that does eat up a large part of my week. You know, by the time I get home, you know, I get home, dinner, any evening chores I need to do, spend time with the kids, spend time with my wife, and it's like okay, it's time to go to sleep. And it's, it's, it's time that, that balance. R- rinse and that. repeat. Yes. So you've been working on this ADHD for about, about a year. Um, you said that you went through this grieving process, but you you feel like emotionally you're, you're, you're sort of, you've accepted um, uh, for the most part anyways. Yeah. Um, and you're learning some of the, the strategies, um, but you're having a hard time sort of inter- actually uh, doing the, the, the stuff, right? Which, yeah. is, which is the heart of ADHD, right? That it's we know what to do, but we're not doing what we know. And that's why accountability is part of the, the, the model that I've created because you can have all of these strategies, all the productivity solutions, all the reminders, all the supports, all the scaffolds around you that support you. But it's that accountability. It's it's that's I think the 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 missing link for a lot of a lot of the stuff. Um, so, what are some of the other areas that you are sort of uh, as you're exploring your ADHD that you're sort of uncovering about? You know, is this part of this? Is that part of it? Because you was. We mentioned at the very beginning of the show that you're kind of piecing together this puzzle and you're not sure all the pieces sort of came through. What are some of those other pieces? Um, it, it's really, it's, 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 it's putting the stuff into practice. I feel like, you know, I, being in a group and seeing what other people are saying and, and doing and they're sharing their, pro- their processes and their planners and things. And uh, there's a couple of local support groups um, that I've, I've um, participated in, talking with those people. And, and it seems like people have come up, you know, I've figured out what works for them. And they're, they're able to put that into practice. And I'm saying, how did you figure this out? I, I just, I, I think the problem, the problem I have is getting started figuring out what works for me sure you know and and um when you said that the first thing that kind of popped into my mind was how often i used to have that kind of thought too and so i just want to really encourage you to just you know part when i say that starting is the hardest part i mean that it i think it really is so if you could think of what is the the first even the smallest baby step towards starting right and know that you're probably not going to get it right the first, second, or even 15th time, right? But keep starting, right? That's what what really helps us learn. It's it, the idea that, that failure is feedback, and I have gotten a lot of feedback in my life. Right? Oh, you and me both. You <laughs> and me both. <laughs> so we start, we start trying these different things, and they, they become our lives experiments, Right. And we have to sort of approach it that way because it's, you know, these, a lot of these productivity sort of strategies that help us sort of orient ourselves to, to time and tasks and priorities. Um, you know, we weren't taught them. They don't come naturally for, for us. And part of our kind of neurophysiology of our brain makes some of these things harder for us. So the, you know, a lot of people want, want to sort of form these, these 
habits, right? Well, habits, you know, are they, they're great because now they're sort of automatic. That all takes time, right? We, we all, you and I both have a lot of habits. Not all of them are good, right? But we have a lot of habits. So in order to get towards automaticity, we have to repeat, 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 repeat until it's, we're not having to think about it all the time. So something I've, I've definitely, um, occasionally to a fault and occasionally to a credit is that I'm, I am stopping about just keeping going. Um, you know, whether it's a failure or, or, a, or a success, I just, I just keep going and keep going and keep going. Um, I, I think it's one of the reasons um, why my wife and I, you know, we, we got from the point of, I mean, she deserves a lot of credit too for multiple, multiple reasons. She's a saint. Um, uh, my, my wife too, by the way. Yeah. I, I, I think any non-ADHD spouse frankly deserves all the medals and commendations in the, in the world. Um, but just my, all throughout my life, whenever I've had challenges, which I now understand were caused by the ADHD, mm -hmm. um, even though I've not liked the outcome, I've still gotten back up and, and tried again anyway, even if it's been the definition of insanity and I've done the exact same thing. <laughs> there was uh, uh, one of the support groups and it was something that I really liked. Um, they, had, they were showing a webinar from, um, from Alan Brown, mm -hmm. the AD, ADD crusher. Yeah, That's crusher it. TV and he'll be on the show again real soon. Oh, cool. I like this. Although he, like might, he might, based on when this is going to come out, he might have already been on the show. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed the episodes I've, I've heard with, with him on. And this, this particular, uh, it was a recording of a webinar he'd given previously. And he was talking about, about failure and, and uh, you know, to keep trying and whatnot. And he, he, there was a picture, you know, those like successories where it's like a picture and some kind of motivational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like success and it has like someone like at the top of the mountain, like, Exactly. Well, he posted one and it was um, someone riding a bicycle in the rain whilst holding an umbrella. And as someone, as the person, as the picture was taken, they were in the process of going over the handlebars. And the <laughs> caption underneath said, um, I do not fail. I succeed in finding what doesn't work. And I, I just, I love that. Because that's, for me, that definitely... I think it's uh, I think it's a more humane spin on things, if you like, mm -hmm. because that's something I've been bad about historically is beating myself up when I forget to do something or I just can't remember something. I'd be, I sh you know, the, the shoddy thinking. I should be able to remember this. Yes. I should be able to do that. Um, and it's it's. I've had to learn that you know what, it's okay to to, to fail. Yeah, it is. It is. Absolutely. You know, and that's one of the things that every uh, every Friday in the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, um, we go through and I, we're trying to kind of capitalize on what were the lessons learned, both from our successes, like what do we learn from what worked? Also, what do we learn from what didn't work? And then most importantly, because we have ADHD and it can't just be like, uh, you know, duly noted, I learned this. It has to be very strategic, right? So we go through and say, okay, so how are we going to remember that in a week? How are we going to remember that in two mm -hmm. or three weeks? At what point in time do you think you might forget this thing? And when, when and how are you going to be reminded of that? Just at that point where you sort of forgot to do that thing that's been working for you to bring you back to, mm -hmm. oh, this is working for me. So that's, that is one of the, the things that we really uh, focus on. It's, it's, you know, as, as kind of scientists of our own domain, you got to take that data, you know, and it's not just observing it and keeping the data in your head because we know how reliable the place that our head is, right? So when we can sort of say, okay, I, you know, that, that lie that we tell ourselves of, I'll remember that. No, you won't. <laughs> you know, I'm still, even, even, as, even now, you know, nine months on, when I know, I know that I'm not going to remember it. And I know I shouldn't do that again, the, the whole shouldn't thing, but I know I ought to write it down. I know I ought to take some sort of, of measure. I don't. And I still tell myself, Oh, I'll remember that. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. So Dan, I just want you to know that. So I am 
I'm 35 years old. I was diagnosed when I was 19. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I specialize in ADHD. I've been digging so far into their research uh, on ADHD, really for the last seven-ish years or so, right? And I did that at least three times today. <laughs> okay. So I, I think part of that is having self-compassion for yourself, right? Yeah. Part of that is is writing, trying to write it down more often than not. Yes. Right. And when you don't, right. And, you know, and when I was, and I was very aware of the fact that, okay, I really, you know, this is something that really needs to get written down. And I'm, I'm, I'm observing the internal dialogue that I'm having with myself of, you know, don't forget that. I won't forget that. That's really, you know, that's, I I know when you do that, like, what am I thinking about? Of course I need to write that down. And I go through this whole dialogue and I'm like, you know, I really didn't, I didn't work out this morning. And I'm like, that's probably why I'm just going to have keep that as a thought and not going to take any action on that. Now it's amazing how fast our thoughts move because that whole dialogue occurs in like three seconds, right? Yeah, yeah, right. But you know, when when you start to pay attention to your thoughts, um, you also can then choose to choose to pause, right, and say, okay, all right, I'll remember that. And you, as you're moving on, and you say, pause. You know, take that breath. All right, let me write this down. Right, and it's it's bringing in that pause is bringing in that some of those uh kind of red flag signals to ourselves um and just trying to improve you know it's we're not we're we're not looking for perfection in fact i i'm um you know as i have said many of times on the podcast I, i'm a perfectionist in recovery right because <laughs> it's like once you start to when you've struggled through so much of your life right and you finally sort of start cracking the code and you start to to experience some success right it's like it feels really really good i mean it's sort of like a drug right yeah and like a drug you you will continue to do things despite knowing that this isn't good for you right so it's that way so being very cognizant of sort of the the internal dialogue that you're having your process how you're going about it and you know asking yourself these questions of is this working for me? Uh, what else do I need to know? Is, is there other smaller chunks of what I could work on? You know, don't try to, to, to improve everything all at the same time. I think it was in um, uh, the, the book, um, Agency Friendly Ways to Organize Your Life, um, which you can get on Audible at uh, audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Um, these are all relevant uh, plugs. Um, where she says East is least and East was an acronym for everything at same time. Right. Okay. So and it's totally true. So if you are wanting to be more productive, like what part of that is going to help you? So is it using a calendar? Is it your to-do list? Is it checking in with your to-do list? Is it sleep? Is it, you know, so there's so many different parts of it and yes, they're all important, but if you try to do everything at the same time, you're going to make the least amount of progress. That's definitely, I think, been one of my biggest pitfalls, uh, because in the beginning, I wanted to fix all of it, because, like, okay, I know what the problem is, and I've been reading the box, and I'm doing things, I'm going to fix the thing, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and that didn't go so well, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm finding I'm, I'm, I'm making more progress now that I'm not trying to do all the things all at once. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still, in some ways, I'm still going through the motions of, of, of not, you know, not starting, either not starting on things mm-hmm. or the, the, the follow through and building that, that repetition and, and making it into a habit that's going to help me, um, be more successful and, 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 you know, just try and get through life in a, in a bit more of a, a manageable way, I guess. You know, um, I don't know if you've listened to this episode yet. Back it was episode, I think, thirty-five. I had uh, I had John Lee Dumas uh, on my podcast, who's uh, the host of Entrepreneur on Fire. He's like he's like the anti ADHD. Not that he's against. He's just he is such a focused person. Um, like it, he he's who I learned who to podcast from. I'm, I'm part of his his uh, podcasting community. Yeah. But, did hear, I did hear that episode, yes. Okay, so he has this acronym called FOCUS, right? Follow one course until success. And I got to tell you, when I first heard that, I was like, come on. You know, it's like, it, you're talking to me here. You're talking to the ADHD community here. It's like, 
we don't do just one thing. Like we, we have multiple multiple balls in the air. You know, it's like could we make it like uh, a twist, but focus on two things until I, you know, it's <laughs> open for negotiation. Right. But here's what I'm uh, this year that I really my my sort of theme for this year for myself has been uh, systemization. Right. So it's really systemizing everything I do in, in my workflow and my in my business. And part of that sort of came from the, the from last year sort of priority for myself. And that's uh, learning to say no, you know, and not taking on more projects and being overwhelmed and uh, which mm-hmm. is still a work in progress. But. The more I've been sort of doing this and the more I've been narrowing and narrowing and narrowing my focus and not taking out more things, I'm starting to have that, oh, now I get it. Like, mm. where, you, where at first it's easy to be very almost dismissive sometimes of some of these things that are kind of productivity based outside the realm of ADHD. But the more you sort of live it, the more you think about it, the more you try things on your own you start to see that, oh, it does sort of make sense. You know, these people who don't have these struggles and talk about these productivity things and and it's like, you know, they actually do hold a lot of the secrets to like our own success. And I think that's one of, been one of the big things for me is stepping outside of the world of ADHD and looking more in the world of just general productivity mm-hmm. has been very, very helpful for me. Um, and I sort of have to live through it and try it and and experience it in order to sort of get it, you know? So yeah. it's like when we try to do everything, we end up doing maybe many things, but not very well. Um, so if you want to do one thing in an extraordinary way, you got to say no to a lot of, you know, potentially good things. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the trying to focus, the, the productivity things and trying to, to trying to apply it um, in a roundabout way, that's something I like the a lot of the productivity things when you hear them, it sounds like a great idea in principle. So like, man, that's a really good idea. And I'm sure if I can if I can nail this, man, I'm gonna be so on top of things. And when it comes to the execution, not so much. And it was kind of that way for me with with um, self compassion. Um, and that was something that I I I, I really had to work on. Because I think that was something that was holding me back was the lack of self-compassion. Um, and it's like, okay, I mean, it's, it's taken, I mean, it's t- taken months to get to the point now where I can, I can have that for myself. But in the beginning, it just seemed like a bunch of tree-hugging hippie nonsense. <laughs> it is not tree-hugging hug, hippie nonsense. Uh, That's all. Uh, speaking of, speaking of tree hugging hippies, I'm uh, this Saturday. I'm actually going uh, to the fish show in Chicago, which I'm really really excited about. Um, totally tangential, unrelated, uh, but I just wanted to mention that because I'm really oh, fish the band. It. Yes, fish the band. Ph. Huh. Yes. Yeah. One of, one of my coworkers is a is a huge fan. Has been to eighty some odd fish shows. Nice. Yeah. He's he's big time. So yeah, every so often we'll just hear from the other room strains of some live fish show or other coming awesome. from. The- Awesome. Like, you know, the, the guys are, are jumping on trampolines simultaneously and, and flying on stage with the, with the flying hot dog. Yes, that's what happens at a fish show. So um, speaking of nothing related to ADHD, what I want to do is we're going to take a, a really quick break. But when we come back, Dan, I'd like to help you get your ADHD rewired and invite you into the ADHD rewired hot seat. You up for it? Yeah, absolutely. All right. We will be right back. Are you curious about what audiobooks other members of the ADHD Rewired community listen to? A number of ADHD Rewired listeners and community members, including Coach Jane Milrod, who you might remember from episode 66, suggested a book I listen to and personally recommend, and that's The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business by Charles Duhigg. Duhigg breaks down how habits work and why we can't really just break habits. We need to build them on top of old ones. This is not just a book that explains the how habit formation works from a behavioral or neurological perspective, although it certainly does do that. It does it all through the lens of storytelling. Jane also recommends pairing the power of habit with Kelly McDonagall's 
the willpower instinct, how self-control works, why it matters, and what you can do to get more of it. Jane said that these two books together will provide you a roadmap for shifting your default pattern in a more productive direction. The Power of Habit and the Willpower Instinct are this week's listener recommendations. Add these to your listening list, and if you haven't taken advantage of your free download yet, consider starting with The Power of Habit and get it now for free by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. Feed your brain. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Support for this podcast comes from the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Groups. Registration for this fall's ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group is just five weeks away. Have you set your reminder yet? Grab your phone, you can use Siri, and say, Remind me in four weeks to go to ADHDrewired.com to schedule my screening call. Registration is only eight days long. It's August 22nd through the 31st. Sessions begin September 12th. 30 sessions, three sessions per week, adult study halls, mastermind sessions, daily and weekly planning, goal setting, time management, self-care, exercise, sleep, develop habits and routines, and know when you're here, you belong. This is ADHD Rewired Coaching. Go to ADHDrewired.com for more details and to let me know you're interested. And we are back with Dan Spears. Dan is going to be sitting in the ADHD Rewired hot seat as we help him get one part of his ADHD Rewired. Dan, lay it on us. What is it that that we can help you with? Um, what, what challenge are you kind of going through that I can maybe provide some support for you with? Okay, so one thing I think I'm, um, I do struggle with is, uh, is one of my work processes. Um, I work in IT. Um, it's very. I provide the company I work for. We provide support for um, small, medium businesses that they want to. They don't want to handle it themselves. They want us to help to look after it for them, so on and so forth. There's emails. There's phone calls. There's people in, within the company coming and looking for us, and constant distractions. And um, so what happens as a result is I don't keep my timesheets up to date. Um, because we need to keep that up to date, ideally daily, especially, you know, given the ADHD and my propensity for not remembering things. Um, I need to make sure that I'm getting everything entered as I'm doing it. One, so that I know where my time's going, but also two, you know, billing purposes. You know, if I don't document how, to- how much time I spent working on this issue for this customer, we can't bill them. It's great for the customer, not so much for us. Right. Is are the uh, the time sheets are they analog or are they uh, computer based? They're computer based. So um, some of this is 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 automatic up to a point. Insofar as um, if I put an entry in a customer's ticket for their issue, then it will automatically update my time sheet. Um, but if I you know if I spend half an hour just doing some digging. Um, kind of get more into a problem, find out what's going on, find out why. Um, and I don't make a note of that time somewhere. That time doesn't get captured necessarily. I may remember it after the fact, you know, two days later or at the end of the week or the Monday, the week after, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking back and I'm going, oh my goodness, I didn't, I haven't thought this since Tuesday. And I'm sitting there and I'm, trying to figure out what I did and when, and, and it's, it's stressful. It's, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's stressful. And I, I know my, my boss is, um, I probably stresses him out too. All right. So I have a, a couple of questions. So um, first, how long does it take you to make an entry uh, into the computer-based uh, tracking system? Um, 
A minute or two, depending on um, how much detail I'm having to put into the entry. Okay. So a minute or two. Um, it sounds like you're not fully sure, but it's sort of your, your gut. It varies. Again, it just depends on how much I'm having to, to document for the okay. time at hand. How many steps are involved to be able to access where you uh, uh, enter the time? Um, so what, walk me through it. Sure. So um, if I have the ticket open in front of me, um, then there's, I have to scroll down to the, the relevant part of the ticket, hit the, uh, and there's, there's three, there's like a public facing notes, internal facing notes, and a resolution section. So I have to choose the relevant section of the ticket notes, hit the time entry button, put in my start time, my finish time, and then whatever my notes are for that, you know, um, research this issue, found this out, found that out, tested this, did the other, um, cast Microsoft under my breath. Um, they keep me in work. We, we, we could actually eliminate that stuff if you want to. <laughs> it's, it's like when I tell kids when they're complaining about like, when they're, when homework is an issue. And, you know, the homework takes 15 minutes, but it takes them an hour because it's been 45 minutes complaining about it. And mm -hmm. I tell them, I can drastically reduce your homework time. You just cut out the complaining time and you got all this free time now. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay. So you have, you, you have to scroll down. You got to hit that choice of three different things. You have to enter your start time, your finish time, your notes. Um, was, was there anything else? No, the, um, at that point, I'm, I'm good. I can hit save. Okay. Um, and I can so move. It's, it's six steps. Right now, and mm -hmm. if you're not doing it sort of as you go through, like, um, through your whole process, now mm -hmm. you're having to use sort of working memory, right? So you have to sort of keep some of this information in mind, which is sort of taxing your executive function. So you have a, a, yeah. a, a sequential, um, a multi-stepped, uh, um, uh, activity that you have to do that involves working memory, um, and it calls recall, right? Okay, and it's something that sounds like it's sort of outside of the actual system that that uh, you do. So it's like this, like um, it's a like a sidecar in a sense. It sort of comes along with you, but it's not actually part integrated. Yeah, that's that's that's. Okay, now you did say that some of it is automated. Uh, other than when you open a ticket, is there are there any other parts that are automated? Not really. I mean, when I say automated, like if I'm um, if I'm actively, let's, let's say, Eric, you called me for help. Mm -hmm. I start a ticket. And then uh, we, we, we spend 10, 15 minutes. I fix the issue. You're happy. I'm happy. We get off the phone. Well, as part of, as part of that process of me documenting it, all that information is going to be automatically captured just by me doing the thing. Okay. If I, um, so it's if an in, I, when, it, when it's an incoming call. Yeah, if it's an incoming okay. if it's an incoming issue, yes. But if I'm let's say I get I've got a spare twenty minutes to work on something else, mm -hmm. that's where the problem comes in. Because I've got to I might think oh, I can work on this. Okay. So let me ask you so when when the something else, what what is that triggered by? Is it a is it a a um a task list that your boss is sending you? Is it like what is it? What's the trigger? Um it'll be, you know, either me just remembering, you know, just kind of like that, oh yeah, I've got this thing to work on. Or I will manually go look and see what I have on my docket and uh, okay, yes, I need to I need to figure out some more on this. Or, you know, just looking to see what's assigned to me basically. Okay. And are you using any kind of task management system? No. Okay. I mean the, the system just I can with you know by two clicks see exactly what what I have to work on. Okay. Um, and then it's just prioritizing and, um, oh, yeah, I need to work on that one. Okay, so I'll start working on it. But then I don't – that's the point that I should start. Okay, I started on this at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. okay? And then make notes as I go and make a note of my finish time. And I have done that at times. It's the consistency. Okay. And a lot of times it seems like a lot of effort. Sure. Um, okay. So let me ask a few more questions. Um, at your at your desk, how many screens do you have? Two. Two screens. 
Um, do you are you often using both screens? Yes. Okay, what are they dedicated for? Um, one screen will generally be um, the ticketing system, so okay. I've got it in front of me at all times, and then the other screen will be um, email um, chats between other team members, and you know my web browser, so I can be looking up things and and. And how big are, how big are your screens? That's a fine question. Uh, I mean, they're a pretty decent size, okay. like 19, okay. 19 inches. So, could you have a dedicated space on one of your screens that keeps your timesheet open at all times? I don't know that. I don't know how well that will. I don't know how well I could make that work. Just because of the way the ticketing, because of the way it's all integrated into the ticket system, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, I did experiment with um, creating a, a reminder. I created a little script that, at the top of every hour, puts a little a little pop up box. It says update your timesheet with a little OK button. Okay. And when I first did that, for the first couple of weeks, I was on the ball. I was doing this and I was doing this. And you could probably guess what happened after a while. I started ignoring. Okay, so go out. Here's what I would suggest, and tell me if you think this would work. Go back to the, the that strategy, but change it a little bit. And do you have any way of creating it? Because you said you sort of created a little code to do yeah. that. Okay, so mm -hmm. so you have you have that skill. Can you create something that creates a little randomization to it? So, and have a couple of different messages and having something that looks a little bit different. And so you don't start to tune it out. Um, so you're like, wait, what's, what's that notification? Oh, that's my, the thing I sent for myself. It just looks different now. Um, I'd probably have to go a slightly different route. Maybe okay. find some kind of a reminder app or something. Um, but that's definitely something I could do. Because if you can create a, almost like a barrier where you have to fill it out before you can do the next thing, like where you actually can't like do the next thing until you fill it out, like then it's, it's creating, you're basically setting up your environment. So you have to kind of cross that bridge in order to get to where you're wanting going where the, mm -hmm. where, it, where the bridge is not optional, right? Like if you want right. to get to, if you want to get to step B, you have to cross the bridge and the bridge is the timesheet. Yeah. That's in the beginning that was working for me. Okay. The problem I would have a lot of times is um, I'd be in the middle of I'd be in the middle of working on something, or I'd mm -hmm. be on the phone with with a customer, and the notification would pop up. And I think that was the problem is it was too easy to dismiss it because I was already in the middle of something else. Mm -hmm. And it's. Uh, I think that's where I gave myself permission to ignore it. Does your note, can you create a snooze function so it comes back in five minutes? Mm -hmm. I'd have to go about it a different way, but possibly yes. Okay. Are there any anchors in your day that are like designated for like uh, specific either stop times or transition times? No, but I think it is something I need to build into my day. Okay. Um, where I, I say, you know, like middle of the morning, middle of the afternoon, set aside 10, 15 minutes to say, all right, I'm going to leave this time like blocked out to just do, just, you know, do my, do my entries. I'll just do that. Um, because trying to do it the way I have been, uh, I, I think I don't, I feel like the time pressure of, you know, I've always, you know, we need mm -hmm. to be constantly moving on to the next thing and moving on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think really what it comes down to more than is time management. What about energy management? Hey. That can be a thing too. You mentioned to me when uh, my, my standard question that I ask before hitting record when I'm checking volume is uh, what did you have for breakfast? Because I just wanted to get you, get you talking so I can check volume. What was your breakfast this morning? My breakfast this morning was, uh, um, it was two donuts from Tim Hortons. Yeah. No sugar. I know. Okay. So your, your brain is sort of like, really, really, Dan, come on. I need, 
I don't want that. I want protein. Like, the, like yeah, it tastes good. Don't give me that. Like, I have, I have time sheets I got to fill out. Right? So that's what your brain is saying. Right? So how's your sleep? Um, my sleep last night, actually, it's funny because I actually wanted to get a good night's sleep last night so I could kind of be on top of my game today. And, um, yeah, I apparently woke up, I woke up at 3.30 with a, a bit of acid reflux. And then didn't sleep well afterwards. I was like, oh, man. Do you, and so when you get a full night's sleep, do you notice uh, it is easier for you to engage in tasks that are, are very sort of monotonous and boring? Um, it is def- it's definitely harder when I don't get a good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Still, even when I, get, I do get a good night's sleep, I do struggle with that, mm-hmm. with that monotony of doing the same, of, 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 of tasks. Um, I, I wonder how much of that is down to the nature of what I'm doing versus, you know, just the ADHD uh, challenges. You know, if you, if you track your sort of the inconsistency, and that is a, sort of a hallmark of ADHD, right, you will find that you can kind of come off the roller coaster a bit. So having like, you know, the really good days or good weeks and really bad, like, or it's turn it into more of a kiddie ride, or it's just the, the ups and downs are kind of gradual by focusing on self-care, sleep, what you're eating. Um, cause things like, like for me, like I have the, my, my process right now for sending stuff to my, my billing person, it's, you know, it takes about five or 10 minutes to, to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. If I did not sleep well the night before, I almost just give myself permission to not even attempt it because like, it's just, it's one of those tasks that when I'm well rested, when I'm exercising in the morning, it's almost effortless. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, and the difference is not a time management issue. It's an energy management issue. Makes sense. Okay. So let me ask you this. So, um, and I've, I think it was my last job I had where I had to do timesheets too. And, and I hate it. And what you're talking about, I had this, all, like all the same issues, right? I was like, oh man, what, what, what did I do during that time? Cause you have to also track all your non-billable hours as well at this place. Yeah. So do you think that you would be more likely to track stuff if you had an analog, um, let's see, version of your system, um, at least to capture the, uh, like who you're working on stuff and for how long and then transfer it at the end of the week? Like, do you think you'd be more likely to do that? Um, potentially, I, I did do that for a while. I would keep a small notepad, and pen next to my keyboard. And if, when I started work on something, I would make a note of the time um, and leave a space for my finish time. And then, you know, jot down some notes so that I knew that when I c- came back afterwards, to fill it in. If I didn't do it there and then, I at least had the the presist that I could put it all together and get it answered. Mm-hmm. And I, I lost the wagon. And then uh, that's when the, when the reminder thing came up and I fell off that wagon too. Okay. So what I'm hearing is, is that you've developed a number of different strategies that worked for at least a few weeks and then you sort of fell off the wagon. Correct. Okay. So have you ever tried to, when you're trying a new strategy, if you are sort of cognizant of sort of the, the shelf life of the strategy, you know, I kind of think about, um, you know, strategies for people with ADHD is sort of like organic fruit, right? It's a little, it's better for you, right? But the yeah. shelf life is not as long, right? So okay. because your fruit rots doesn't mean you stop buying fruit. It means you just go get more fruit, right? Okay. So if you create a reminder for yourself, so let's say you, you go back to, uh, and if you have a number of different strategies that you've used before, you can cycle them throughout. So, you know, let's say a strategy works for you for about three or four weeks. Okay. And let's say you have four or five different approaches that have worked for you for a few weeks, right? Okay. You can create a rotation in a sense. You don't have to keep reinventing the wheel in a sense. No. And then when you start a new, uh, a new strategy, Create a reminder for yourself in three to four weeks, letting you know, kind of reminding you, okay, it's been three or four weeks since I've started this. Am I still using this? Do I need to shift my system? Sometimes just that that question of awareness of, okay, it's been three to four weeks, so I need to shift my system. When we're actually cognizant, uh, consciously aware of that and we're aware that, okay, here's my sort of point where I start to fade out of this cert- certain yeah. system. One of two things will happen. Either we are very aware of it and we shift systems or we think, 
shipping systems is actually a lot more work. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll keep this one going for another three or four weeks. And then it repeats itself. That's, that's really good. That's a really good idea. I like that. Because um, I've always felt, as I'm trying to, and I think I can apply this to other areas too, because um, when I when I do struggle with that consistency, I don't just completely disregard it, that, you know, whatever system I was using, but it's a, oh, man, now I've got to try and come up with something else. Now I've got to, and I, I never stop to think that, well, maybe I could just go back and do that one thing because it didn't work. And so I guess in my mind, I just kind of associate that as, well, I tried it, it didn't work. So it's obviously not the thing for me. So why should I go back to it? Right. And yeah. that's not, that, the issue yeah. is not that it's not the thing for you. It's the issue that it's that they, uh, we get bored very easily of stuff. And so yeah. we lose some of that novelty. So we need the, we need the, it's like this. So when you have ADHD, you need timers around you to keep track of time, right? Mm -hmm. You can use different kinds of timers if you're getting bored of the timer you're using. I mean, in, on my, uh, on all my devices, on my iPad, on my iPhone, I have an entire folder of timers, right? A lot of them do kind of the same thing, but when it looks a little bit different, I glance over at my desk. I'm like, oh, okay, I have five minutes left. And I noticed it because it's not the same thing that I'm looking at all the time. You know, I have uh, two yeah. just analog timers sitting on my desk, right? Because I switch them out. Like sometimes I'm in the mood for this one. Sometimes I'm in the mood for that one. Sometimes yeah. I can't reach one of them because I fell on the floor and I haven't picked it up in two weeks. You know, so there, <laughs> there are those kinds of things, right? Yeah. So, all right. So let, let me ask you this. So it, it sounds like the, the idea of um, kind of having a, a rotating toolbox that is on a sort of uh, uh, schedule that reminds you of, hey, are you still work using this? Is this getting bored? Is it time to switch? It sounds like that's something that, that is uh, um, based on your reactions. Like, I, I want to try that. Yeah. So here, here is yeah. the question. So here is the question that I always ask uh, my, my clients in, in, in the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. All right, so okay. now that you've sort of, you want to try this, we're talking right now. Mm -hmm. How are you going to remember this when it's not right now? Okay. Well, I, I should elaborate. Um, well, Eric saw Because but... holding up your phone makes for great audio. It does. <laughs> it does. I've got a great face for radio. What can I say? Um, but yeah, what I'm what I'm doing is um, picking up my phone and um, opening up Google Keep, which I, I will say, if you're not using Google Keep, yeah, to tell us you, a little bit about that, if you will, because I've had a few people yeah. tell me about Google Keep, and I'm, I don't actually know what it is. Sure. So it's basically um, it's uh, it's on Android, um, it's on iOS. And it's also available on the website. If you have a Google account or Gmail account, you can use Google Keep. Um, and it's keep.google.com if you go to the website. And it's a note-taking tool. Um, it's not as fancy or as complicated necessarily as your Evernote and your Wonderlists of the world. But if you just need a, a uh, basic note, you know, we can, a basic note-keeping tool where you can jot down something. Um, or create a checklist, like a list for the grocery store, or a, uh, it will also take audio notes, or you can take a picture, and use that as a note. Um, it's just, a, 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 for me at least anyway, it's, it's a handy way of just making that quick note. Um, and you can also set reminders on notes, uh, okay. which is a feature I like. Um, so I can, I can create a note to say, I need to do X later. But then I can set a reminder for late for that later time frame that will pop up and say, "Hey, reminder, you know, you were going to do X." Okay, so you're going to put this right now into Google Keep. Yes, I don't and, have any. And, and I'll give you a moment to, to get it in there, and we, I can edit the audio so it's not so long of a of a, uh, of a gap. Okay. So I have a question for you: Is there anyone in your office who knows you have ADHD? Yes, the office knows. <laughs> the entire office knows. Even the building knows. Um, is there are there people there that uh, leave after you typically? Um, not necessarily. I'm usually one of the last people standing. Okay. So, 
just a thought on how you might be able to use a little bit of accountability if uh, you have someone that you like enough in the office to do this with you. When you get to work, give them your car keys and tell them to not give them back to you unless that you have completed your your timesheet. Ooh, beautiful. For for oh, some I, people that would really work for it. For other oh, people yeah. that would they would get like their oppositional nature would kick in and be like, screw that, I'm not doing that. <laughs> My fear with that is is that if said person had to take off uh, an emergency for a client and they're still there past quitting time. I'm stuck 50 miles from home until they, until they get back to me. All right. Um, and maybe maybe if, if you like that idea, we can sort of work out some of the logistics. Sure, sure. Let me throw one, one, one final uh, idea at you um, as a way to uh, way to track. And we do this again in, in our coaching groups. Mm-hmm. So did you ever have a star chart when you were a kid? A star chart? Yeah, start. It's like a behavioral modification thing where it's it's a way where you can track a specific goal, and so it's you know you often will have a either a series of weeks, maybe five or six weeks. So you have seven days in the week, and you ch- you check, you either put a star on it, a smiley face, or some other indicator that you oh, did or didn't okay. do something. Okay. Yeah, like the kids have a have chore charts on their refrigerator. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So star charts are not just for kids; they're great ways for for us for tracking specific goals. Do you think that you can keep a an analog version? And do you think it would, you would be better using an analog version of um, basically printing out a, a, a star chart? And I can give you a uh, a link. Um, I have some I have some on my website. Uh, if you go to oh, okay. just, yeah, if you just go to my website adhdrewired dot com, click on resources, then worksheets. Um, th- there's a, a number of templates there uh, oh, for it. Okay. They're free to download. Um, so I just, it's really important that you're really clear and specific when you're creating a goal for yourself. And most people do well by gaining momentum versus, you know, you want to give yourself room to to sort of fail and not feel like you failed. You know, a lot of people like they'll set this goal of, All right, I'm going to do my, my timesheet, uh, you know, three times a day for five days for the next, you know, three weeks, not missing a day. And I'm going to say, don't do that right so if so i would ask you how what are you what's your current like what are you currently doing so let's say you say you know you do it you're consistent maybe once uh, every couple days right what what are what is your track record right now like how long how long will go with uh from uh using your timesheet um let's see it's where it's what thursday today Mm -hmm. um Thursday, June twenty third, when we're recording this. Okay, so my in the moment stuff is all in there, but the the filling in the blanks is I haven't got any of it for this week filled in. I I, I have no problem with missing that. Okay, so what if you created a uh, a goal for yourself for uh, at least for the next week to um, complete your your timesheet. Uh, um, two days during the week. And then if you, if you achieve that at the end of the week, next week, go to three, three days. And if you achieve that next week, go to four days. Okay. If you don't, if and on that process, if you, if you miss uh, your, your objective goal, stay with where you're at. Okay. Then, uh, don't, don't move up to the next level until I'm succeeding at the one I'm at. Right. And if you are, if there's two uh, weeks in a row where you don't hit it, Come back down one, or, or and if if you're not getting it, then then we might need to relook at how you're doing it. That's I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. That's yeah. It's certainly better than the way I've been trying to do it. Let me get the spin in your head, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it would be spinning if it was possible. Um. So. It, with and I'm just trying to really think through this too to, to help you uh, set yourself up for success. It's the it's not so much the when an incoming call uh, or email comes in that you're responding to. It's the I have this thing that I just sort of thought of that I had to do for this client, and now I'm going to start doing it. Yeah, it's the it's the coming back to things. So it's, um, let's say I started working on something and I hit a stopping point or. I had to move to something else because it was time sensitive. And when I'm coming back to that thing later on, mm-hmm. that's usually where the problem comes in. Would a program like rescue time help you? 
Rescue Time tracks uh, everything you're doing on your computer? Um, I don't think I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. So it's it's really I mean you, there's a it's a it's a uh, freemium kind of software where you can use a free or or paid version. Sure. The thing that the, the thing that I really like about it is um, where the, at the very least it will help increase that self awareness of what am I doing, um, how often am I shifting between programs, how long am I on that program, um, mm-hmm. and you can even set goals on that. You can actually so it, your timesheet is tracked in what program? It's tracked within the ticketing application okay it's all just it's, it's just all one okay so I, i'm wondering hmm, if there because there's a way you can set goals for to be uh in a uh, in a specific program for a certain amount of time or can you set it to not be in a certain program for a certain amount of time um and then you can get sort of notifications about the time that you're spending in those specific programs I just lost my train of <laughs> I was either thinking you're either really deep in thought, making some connections, or you're just watching the train of thought. Just go away. I missed the train. I was on I was I was kind of like one foot on the train and then jumped off because the platform was over there as it pulled out the station. Um Squirrel. Um I... We're talking about tracking uh tracking time um uh on rescue time. I think I could definitely use it from a big picture perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I don't know how granular I can make it with regards to the ticketing. Well, actually, I might be able to, because you said it tracks websites and things, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Depending on how, because tr- normally I just do everything through the application, but there is also a web-based portion to it. So if, if, the time, if the time tracking has a specific identifiable URL, then I can say, how much time am I spending on here? If I do could, my- Dan, could you designate the application only for one purpose and the website part of it only for time tracking or vice versa? Is that something you can do? I don't see why not. Because I think that would potentially make the tracking piece of it work for you. Yeah. That may, that may be a, a better way of doing things. So with something like that, when you're creating a new rule for your system, I would uh, something that works for me is to put like a sticky note on my computer that sort of has that rule on there. That like, uh, so the application is for the ticketing, website is for timesheet. And so it's... So you're not having to like rethink. You're like, um, wait, I was going to do one for the other. Wait, which one was it? I did it yesterday. Uh, don't make it weird to think about it, right? Right. <laughs> but yeah, cause, yeah, I get space in the box. My monitor is usually the, the, the bottom. Of my monitor is on, a, is on like arms so I can move them around. Typically, from week to week, it, there's a litany of post-it notes of I need to remember to do this. I need to remember to do that. Did I do this thing? Uh, yeah, call this person back. So if we were to follow up with you in about a month from this recording, um, mm-hmm. what would you like to be able to share uh, with, with listeners as far as your progress? What do you want to be able to say? Um, I'd like to be able to say that um, I'd like to be able to say that it definitely three times a week. I'm, I'm getting it done every day. Uh, I mean, you know, in the absolute ideal world, I'm getting that puppy done every day. It's complete and all the rest of it. But being more realistic, I think if I say if I'm consistently getting it done three days a week, um, and that I'm maybe um, I've rotated through a system, I've gone from one system to another system to help keep it fresh. I think that's. I think that's. Uh, it feels like a reasonable, I mean, it feels like a reasonable, achievable goal. So I'm going to put in my calendar to follow up with you on July 14th. Okay. And I'm going to put a note on the same date. 
that Eric is going to follow up with me. Eric is going to follow up to see if I'm being effective with my strategy. Staggered now strategy for my timesheet. And that's going to be an all day reminder for July the 14th. Awesome. And we can either uh, hop on a quick Zoom call then, um, or you can also leave an audio message and then I can uh, play that in, the, in an upcoming episode. Sure. Whatever. Uh, Zoom calls fine by me. Whatever, yeah, this... whatever, whatever, works for your, whatever works for your schedule. All right. And you guys notice how we said schedule. It's very, uh, it's very across the pond like of you. Yes, I do get a lot of sticks of that because I'll say, hey, hey guys, can we schedule this in somewhere? And they'll be like, you want us to do what now? <laughs> sure. I don't know what that means. <sighs> Schedule. See, we understand you now. Lines. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. Um, I do occasionally get a lot of good-natured flack from uh, from my colleagues for, uh, for pronunciations, terms of phrase, things like that. It, it, it comes with the territory, I guess, of being an Englishman in America. That's fun, though. It's fun. Now, this has been fun, Dan. I hope that this is helpful for you. And thank you for sharing your story and, and your journey with us. Well, thank you for having me on. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been very enlightening. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to putting this into practice and, and letting you know uh, how it turns out. Any final thoughts you want to leave, uh, leave listeners with? Although I've, I've rambled on a lot at times, and you know, that's what we do, but um, I guess if anyone's coming to this and um, and and, and they, they're kind of in the you know they're in that figuring things out process, stick with it. It's hard. You feel like you're the only person. You feel like you're alone. You're not. You can do this. I emigrated to another country and carved out a life and a career for myself despite being undiagnosed and having no clue what was going on with ADHD with none of it. And I succeeded haphazardly despite that. So if we can succeed despite our, our problems or, or our limitations, then imagine how much more we're capable of once we understand it. I'm just on the tip of the iceberg. And I'm already in a much better spot than I was months ago don't give up just sheer bloody mindedness and perseverance sheer blooded mind bloody bloody blood bloody mindedness sheer bloody mindedness you just had this like brilliant eloquent kind of final thought and i step in and just trip over myself so let's just finish let's just finish it right there then dan thank you so much for uh for sharing your story and your journey and uh, for, for stepping into the, the ADHD wired, rewired hot seat to help you get your ADHD rewired, because I know that your story is also helping other people rewrite their story. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Eric. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. This has been Eric Tibbers, and I want to thank you for listening to another episode of ADHD Rewired. If you're new to the show, welcome. We are more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning growing, and connection. You can learn more about us at ADHDrewired.com. You can find additional resources for each episode, join our private Facebook group, learn about the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, join the email list, schedule a free consultation with me to learn more about my services, or even schedule with me to be a guest on this podcast. It's all at ADHD rewired.com season seven of the adhd rewired coaching and accountability group starts september 12th supercharge your productivity experience the power of group coaching the adhd rewired way go to adhd rewired.com and click the adhd rewired coaching and accountability group graphic for more information and to schedule your free registration and screening call with me don't let this season pass you by. Did you know that I give talks and all-day workshops? If your school, business, or organization, or conference planning committee are looking to hire that person, 
to give an incredible, educational, inspirational talk on ADHD, whether you're looking for a keynote speaker or an all-day workshop. Look no further than ADHDrewired.com and click on Talks at the top of the page. Don't just be a passive listener. Be an active member of the ADHD Rewired community. We're on Facebook. You can like our page, but submit your request to join our free and growing community. Watch for a message from me on Facebook because I screen everybody before they come into the group. Help spread the word. Hit the share button right there in your podcast player, and you could send this to a friend, post it on Facebook, Twitter, or your favorite social media channel. And if you're in any other ADHD-based group online, don't be shy about mentioning this podcast. We're all looking for resources. Tell your clients about it. Tell your therapist or coach about it. And tell them that their clients will like it. And if you go to a local support group like Chad, mention this podcast at your next meeting. And if you want to let me know how you shared it, send me a message at ADHDrewired.com or message me on Facebook or Twitter. I'm at Eric Tivers. You can also help people learn about this podcast by leaving an honest rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher. Go now or set yourself a reminder, and then, after you do it, give yourself a pat on the back, or maybe even a gold star. You deserve it. You can help ADHD Rewired get a new and improved website by checking out my sponsors and affiliates, Zoom, Audible, and Amazon. If you're a coach, you got to check out Zoom. You and your clients will love it. Have you ever seen one of my webinars? I use Zoom for that too. Go free, go pro, or go webinar. But please, tell Zoom to pay me by going to erictivers.com slash Zoom or click the Zoom logo at the bottom of ADHDrewired.com. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a free 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. And if you love shopping as much as I do, which is not at all, then you probably shop the way I do. And that's on Amazon. Next time you go to Amazon, use the Amazon search portal at ADHDrewired.com. A small percentage of your purchase will go to support this show. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. Production support, audio mixing, editing, uploading, and show notes, which you can find at ADHDrewired.com, comes from Tom Nardone. Check out his inconsistently released but consistently entertaining podcast, The Tom Nardone Show. Tom blogs at tomnardone.net, which is also where you can pick up a copy of Chasing Kites, a true story about Tom growing up with ADHD when nobody knew about ADHD. Join Tom as he shares stories from his childhood through adulthood. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll gasp, you might hold your children tight, and you might get strange looks by anyone sitting around you. Get your copy of Chasing Kites at TomNardone.net, available in print and as a digital download. This has been Eric Tivers reminding you that if you want to be more productive, prioritize self-care, and don't sacrifice sleep. And as long as you keep starting what you've already started, you'll continue getting closer to finishing what is not yet done. Until next time.